The mattress in the small, dingy hotel was lumpy, and I shifted positions to keep a button from pinching my back. It didn't do too much good, though, so I just tried to forget my surroundings. My eyes followed the progress of a roach as he crawled across the ceiling. He finally darted into one of the hundreds of cracks in the wall. The small light that hung from the ceiling cast shadows against the walls. To amuse myself, I began to make silhouettes. Holding my fingers up, I make a donkey head. Quickly growing tired of this, I began to pace up and down. The three days I had been cooped up in the room were beginning to tear on my nerves. The radio in the next room went on. That would be pregnant woman next door getting up. Without even trying to listen, I could hear the water running in her face bowl. Soon the sound of her brushing her teeth came from the thin wall. I knew her next movement before she performed it. She would open the door and go down the hallway to the toilet, then spend the rest of the morning there, doing God knows what. I stood by my door and waited. Soon as I heard her come out, I opened mine. I stared at her as she paddled down the corridor towards me, wide-legged. She smiled as she passed. Again, I was shaken by the sight of her. She wasn't beautiful, not the way most men would judge beauty. To me, she seemed like an untamed queen. She was tall, taller than me. I had always been drawn to dark women, and she was by far the most attractive black woman I had ever seen. She was jet black, and her skin seemed to be as soft as velvet. I watched her wide ass as she waddled down the hallway. It was extra large, but in her condition, that was expected. Oh well, I cautioned myself. You can look, but don't get involved. I had enough problems without getting the responsibility for some pregnant bitch that nobody else want. I stopped at the desk and paid my rent. It was $10 a week or $2 a day. I had no desire to stay there permanently, so I paid mine daily. I caught a cab outside the hotel and went downtown. I found a drugstore and went into the money order counter. I counted my bankroll. $52 was the family jewels. For a moment, I hesitated. Then went on and had a $25 money order made out to Tony. Next, I found a food counter and ordered breakfast. While waiting for it, I wrote a short note to Tony, then mailed it. After that, I got down to serious business. I spent the whole morning and most of the afternoon running in and out of stores, shortchanging the sales girls. After that, I hit a men's store and played for two suits that came off a clothing rack where the prices started at 100 or better. With both suits tucked under my armpits in a booster fold, I scanned the moving traffic until I saw an empty cab. After waving it down, I had to outrun two women shoppers to the cab door. I slammed the door in their faces and grinned at the driver. He smiled in return as I gave him the directions, then pulled into the moving traffic. Stopping a block away from my destination, I paid my fare and started walking. My purpose for walking paid off quicker than I hoped. Towards the middle of the block, I entered a barber shop and sold both suits. When I came back out on the street, I felt pretty good with myself. I had made over $200 hustling that day. The Ding Dong restaurant was partially empty when I entered. It was a large, greasy spoon slop house. In the middle of the floor was a horseshoe counter with the waitress on the inside of it, each working a different side. I sat down in the curve of the counter so that I could watch the pinball machines lined up against the wall. The sound of laughter caused me to whirl around on my footstool. Four sporting girls, still in their teens, entered with two young pimps I had seen around. One of the men nodded towards me, while the other ignored me and went to the jukebox. As soon as the music began, two of the girls started dancing. George the fat white proprietor of the restaurant, came out of the back and stood, 
at the counter watching the buttocks of the dancers. From the gleam in his eyes, I knew that the sign of the wall, no dancing, meant nothing. When my food came, I just picked over it. The short, thin, light Negro who had gone to the jukebox took a seat near me and began speaking to the girls. I got a pimp or die, he yelled in a shrill voice. If a whore don't give me no money, I starve to death. I don't know how to do nothing but pimp. Pimp or die, he continued to babble. Some people think the game is cop or blow, but it ain't. It's cop, lock, and block, cop and hold. The girl shot me a startled glance. His remarks were directed at me. Everybody in this town seemed to know that I had lost my ladies. That's why, he continued, it's pure delight for a bitch to choose me. I'm the sweetest thing this side of heaven. Why, a bitch would have to be crazy to leave me. Ain't that right, baby? He turned to the girl sitting next to him for agreement. Her head bobbed up and down stupidly. If he had stated he could fly, she would have given the same answer. The jukebox went silent. George came from behind the counter and put in some more money. He motioned to one of the girls dancing, and she ran over to punch some buttons. George slipped his arm around her waist and got a few free fills. She squealed with laughter, punched the last record quickly, and expertly slipped out of his grasp. Loudmouth jumped up with a yell. Everything I do, I do good. He shouted and pulled the nearest girl from her stool and started dancing. After watching him a few moments, I knew I could make him wish he had never learned to dance. From close observation, I knew the smaller of the two girls dancing was the better dancer. Without hesitating, I grabbed her arm and pulled her towards the middle of the floor. I gave her a spin before she was ready and caught her hand when she came around. I dipped and started doing the new bop. She smiled up at me. All women love to dance with a man who knows what he's doing, and she quickly realized that I was exceptional. We danced as though we had been doing this together all our lives. Out of the corner of my eye, I could see the other couple. Loudmouth was doing the split and whatever else came to his mind. He tried to outdo me, but it was useless. The harder he tried, the sillier he looked. The record ended and I went back to my seat, with Tiny following me. You sure are mellow, baby, she said, sitting down on the stool next to me. Her compliment was sweet to my ears. I turned around on my seat and stared at her. She was small, smaller than I thought. With shoes on, she still wouldn't stand over five feet. That was the only way you could call her small, in height. Her legs and hips were extremely large for a woman her size, while her breasts would stand up to measurement in any company. You like what you see? She asked softly. I smiled and continued my meticulous examination. Her hair had been processed and she wore it flat, combed to the front. It gave her the look of being fast and slick. She was golden brown and her skin didn't have a blemish. There was a look about her eyes that seemed older than her body. She had the eyes of a woman who had been hardened by life, yet she couldn't even have been older than 18. Everybody calls me Little Bit, she informed me. So now, horse son, we know each other, don't we? Her laughter was harsh, but pleasant at the same time. I remained silent and smiled at her knowingly. I knew she had used my name for the sole purpose of getting me to ask her how she found it out. I listened to her simple chatter. After a while, I came to the conclusion that Lil Bit wasn't too bright. She talked constantly in an unceasing flow about various people in show business. It would have been impossible for her to have known all the entertainers she spoke of. After we had danced a few more times, a little bit chose. I had copped a whore by the simple fact of being a good dancer. 
not because I run some heavy game down to her or impressed her with how clever I was. She talked so fast that I hadn't been able to get my words in. We left the restaurant and headed for my place. I was still trying to pimp from between my legs. A little bit laid up with me till close to midnight before she got up and started to dress. She dressed slowly and ran her mouth constantly. Having my own racehorse on the track meant a lot to me, but her persistent gibbering had destroyed the satisfaction I had felt about copping another mud kicker. Normally, I would have gone up on the track with her. The main reason for doing this would have been to protect her from the man she had left, but Lil Big claimed she hadn't had any pimp. Common sense warned me. Most of the time, when you find a prostitute who doesn't have a man someplace, something is wrong somewhere. Being at that stage of life where impressing people meant so much, I lay back on the bed and imagined what the whores would be saying about my quick cop. When she returned at about six in the morning, she shook my shoulder and started chattering. I rolled over and mumbled for her to put the trap money on the dresser. Then I quickly covered my head up with the pillow and pretended to sleep. I lay there silently and listened to all sounds of morning life. Cars starting up to take men and women to factories and shops. Finally, a little bit settled down and soon the sound of her gentle snoring came regular to my ears. I drifted off again and slept until the door next door kept opening and closing, reawakening me. After lighting a cigarette, I got up and walked over to the dresser to find my trap money. If I hadn't been fully awake at first, I was now. I recounted the six crumbled one dollar bills. In two giant steps, I was at the bed jerking covers back. I shook a little bit until her eyes opened wide with fear. Holding the money under her nose, I slammed her back against the bed. Wait, Daddy, she managed to say. I didn't break luck till early this morning. You know you kept me in the bed till late. And when I got up on the corner, there wasn't many tricks riding. Releasing my grip from her nightgown, I stepped back from the bed. She was awake now and talking a mile a minute. The floodgate was open, and I really didn't know how to stop it unless I put my fists in it. Since this was Friday, it would be a good night in on the streets for a whore, so I didn't want to jump on her. It was the only thing that had prevented Lil' Bit from getting a good ass kicking that morning. She was talking so fast I couldn't get a word in. Stepping up to the bed, I grabbed the pillow and covered her face with it, not to scare her, but just so I could get a word in. Bitch, I yelled angrily. I rather toss bricks at the penitentiary than allow the whore of mine to bring me short money. She was kicking so hard I took the pillow from around her head. I didn't want to smother her. Had she realized that I lived by this cold, she could have avoided a lot of future grief. All she had to do was gather her few belongings and leave, even though I was still immature and too unseasoned to be a good pimp. I set certain standards, and any whore that chose me would have to live up to them. Soon as she caught her breath and figured I wouldn't kill her, she opened the floodgates again. I turned back and slammed the door on my way out. I stormed down the hallway in a rage. My pregnant neighbor was coming into the hotel when I crossed the lobby. She smiled brightly at me, but I frowned down so tough that her friendly greeting froze on her face. I went downtown and started playing con with a deadly intent. I short my way down one side of the street and back up the other side. After paying one supermarket cashier out of a 10 spot, I doubled back and got into another line and played another cashier out of another bill. We were having an Indian summer and the day was too hot for good boosting without a shop box, so I just kept playing on stuff. Traffic was backed up the street with workers changing shifts when I started back towards the track. The bars were full of workers cashing their checks. I cursed my youth with a passion. Had I been of age, 
I could have mingled in the bathrooms with those veteran prostitutes. And in my daydreams, I imagined myself the master of 50 hard-working whores. I strolled on down towards the pool room. That was one place I could get into without too much trouble. I could easily stand and lose $20 or more to improve my game. After all, I had close to $300 in my pocket. It was just dark when I emerged from the pool room. My bankroll was $15 shorter than it had been. But I counted that as cheap fees for learning how to play nine ball good. On a back table in the pool room, a crap game was in the process of starting. I knew that it would start off small bets, but as the night advanced, it would gradually accelerate until most of the players were wagering the don't go money. I stopped and peeped through the ding dong window on my way home and spotted my paltry whore. She was in the middle of the restaurant floor doing a bump and grind. Two prostitutes leaning on the front of the building watching me closely. I spoke to them and continued on down the street. Back at the hotel, I pulled my suitcase out and rumbled around until I found my bag of tea. Removing three pairs of white, green, and red dice from the bag, I tossed them on the bed while I put the suitcase back up. Returning to the crooked dice, I made a few practice knocks with the bust out. I practiced switching the dice until my movement was so graceful, I felt I could swindle the game without fear of being detected. I carry all three sets of dice with me in case the houseman should change the color of the dice in the game. My nerves were tingling at the prospects of winning. I walked down the hallway with a light gait. Horse son, horse son, wait a minute. You going up on the corner? I turned to see my neighbor waddling down the hall towards me. Her belly was protruding in front of her so far that she seemed deformed. She was grinning at me as if I were the expecting father. There was something about her that I liked, so I returned to smile. Actually, I wasn't in any rush. I wanted the game to be going full blast whenever I got back to it. Yeah, baby, I'm going up on the set. I took her arm and helped her down the stairs. Big as your stomach is, honey, I'm kind of curious about what you're going to have. Bull or elephant? She laughed and leaned on me. It was a gay sound and I liked the huskiness in her voice. I'm a big girl. Horse son, look at me. Can't you tell? Everything about me is big. I tossed my hands in the air in mock alarm. You mean to tell me everything is large, honey? That deep, beautiful sound of gaiety escaped from her again. Yes, baby, she replied, smiling. Even that's getting large, but that's one problem I'll correct as soon as I drop this load. Without seeming to do it, I examined her closely. With the heels she wore, I was a couple inches under her. She inquired casually. Now that you have smoked me over at close range with those bewitching eyes of yours, would you care to know my name? That is, if I've passed your inspection. Actually, I was ashamed of living next door to her and not having taken the time to ask her name. She drew me closer. Marie Wilson. That's my whore name. And my real name, too. Even though don't nobody call me by that. They all call me Boots. Don't feel bad now. She admonished me. I didn't know your name until your girl came to my room this afternoon and talked me to death. The night had grown chilly, so I slipped my arm around her waist and we walked. Boots waved to a couple of girls walking out of a doorway, then snuggled closer in my arms as we walked up to the pool room. She looked at me sadly. I'd heard about you, horse son, before I ever knew who you was. And I think I know just what you need. My only regret is that I didn't meet you before I got pregnant. She walked off and left me staring after her in surprise. Before going on into the pool room, I walked to the restaurant and peeked through the window. It wasn't too much of a shock for me to see my whore in her favorite spot. With a boy about my age, 
She was dancing in the middle of the floor. It wasn't hard for me to figure out why my trap money was shitty. I slowly walked back to the pool room. If the crap game went off the way I anticipated, I had one hell of a surprise in store for her.